Uh, he's won the James Millikan Award. He has uh, studied at the University of Wisconsin with Carlos Topez. And there'll be other uh, information that will come with you about Fred Leach. This is a very desirable, collectible painting. Of course, it's signed in the lower right and says AWS American Watercolor Society, the most prestigious watercolor society that one might like to be in. So um, this Fred Leach painting is, is yours uh, for, well, $600, we hope. That's a, a steal for that. Ah, Susan Fiore. Susan Fiore's work is also very collectible. Oh, I told you this is a great board. It really is. This one's donated to us by John Naylor of Shaker Boulevard in Cleveland. We certainly appreciate this donation. I have not seen this one before, and I'm so delighted to have it. It's a very large Fiore. This is 40 by 32 overall with a wide, about 4-inch white mat and a gold tone frame. And the image size is, a, well, about 5 inches. Oh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Image is 22 by 28. First of all, Susan Fiore, as you know, was, the, has, was in Cleveland for many years, and now she uh, resides, I'm not sure, I think it's California, where she's still doing uh, marvelous artwork. She is a master of the silkscreen technique, which is the medium that this is in. The title of this is Deep Blue Sea on a Deep Blue Day. It's a um, uh, number 13. The edition is only 48. It's pencil signed, pencil titled and numbered and has her signature next to 1982 when this was done. It is in pristine condition, ready to hang or uh, if you wanted to reframe it, you don't need to. I mean, it's fine, but uh, it's all ready for your wall. Uh, this has, uh, if there's ever one point perspective, this is really it. She's divided into kind of geometric high shaped pieces with the straight line of the sea and the blue blue of the sky and the ripples in the sand and then the, the little bank of flowers and then a hill. It's just a stunning piece. I think the, the curves of the clouds really complement the waves as the waves approach the shore. And you get some of the same repeated colors, the white and the light blue on the clouds, the white and the light blue on the sea and then those swirling lines. She has uh, quite a resume that goes with this. She talks about the process, and you can tell, she means that she says, I love the process. There is something richly satisfying about the tools that she uses. Uh, with that, you'll get a, a resume that tells about juried shows she's been in, national uh, and uh, local shows, invitationals. This resume is not as up to date as some others. I'm sure we could get a more up to date one, but this, this tells um, May Show, uh, JCC Annual Art Gallery Photography Show, Purchase Award at JCC, Commissions. She's done, you might know this, done Tellart record covers. In fact, I'm uh, fortunate enough to have one of the silk screens that, were, that uh, turned out to be on one of the records, which I'm really happy about. This is, she's done covers for Prevention Magazine. She's done covers for Northern Ohio Live. She did a design for uh, Langenthal China in Switzerland and on and on. All that information will come with it if you bid on number 206. The next piece is a Jack Loney watercolor. Now we have had Jack Loney's work, I think, every auction for probably the past 10 years. This one is donated to us by Ron Green of Fitzwater Road in Brecksville. We have two Loney's, this is the first, and they're both very, very different. This is a value of $700, and if you're familiar with uh, Jack Loney's work, which I'm sure many of you are, you know that that's a, a realistic price. Uh, this, this is just stunning. I really think Jack's forte is in doing marine scenes and boats and, wa and uh, water and reflections. He just has a marvelous way with watercolor. This is a scene of a fishing village. I, somebody said they thought they recognized as a spot off the coast of Maine. And I don't know, there's, there's not a title with it, but it, that could well be. His color is stunning. It's very translucent and very clear, and what's reflected in the water is what is in the sky. As he gets down toward, as you go up toward the uh, uh, coastline, you can see the lighthouse and the towers uh, all kind of making their own little grouping there. And then as you go to the right, you begin to see the fishing pier and the, the wonderful lobster traps on that side of the little fishing shack and the bobbins for the, for the nets. And then you come forward and you begin to see the people clamming there where the, wa the water is shallow. And in the shallow waters, it becomes much darker, but it's still just crystal and clear. And then his signature at the lower right. And it's dated uh, 987, 87. It is a beauty. It's got a terrific frame, a gold fillet, a cream mat, and a, a two-tone wood frame. It is a stunner. The size of it is 23 by 37 overall. 
You'll get with it a copy of some newspaper articles about Jack Loney. Uh, he also does boat portraits. We've had some stunning boat portraits. He was our on-air artist a few years back, and he's just so much fun. He's a wonderful person. Uh, he's donated one to us. We're going to sell tomorrow night as well. Uh, he does other things as well as watercolor, but this is really his main, um, the main thing that he does. He was an art major, of course. His marine paintings are collected uh, around the country. He was he executed posters of the old arcade and of the for the Budweiser 500 uh, race. And he says he builds. Uh, he never retires. He just keeps building his business. He does so many watercolors. We're very pleased to have this bid on number 6240 for the Loney watercolor. Mary Deutschman is the next donor, and again we're pleased to have her work. Mary Elizabeth Deutschman is from Lakeview Drive in Bay Village, and she has donated a $1,200 painting. It is just stunning. I have never seen any colors more lush and more, um, so, uh, if you could call a color voluptuous, this would be it. They are so painterly and so beautiful, and, and um, where one color overlaps another, each one just brings forth a new sort of almost a singing color. This is a farm with silos, that's the title, numbers 1698 for you to bid on. This is a fairly large work also, 24 inches high and 30 inches wide. It has just a strip wood frame on it. You could leave that or you could put a different frame on it if you like. Of course, she has signed it. You can see as you're coming into this, the, uh, the silos and the barns. Now, this is not what one would call realistic. It isn't really quite what one would call uh, impressionistic either, but it does have uh, strokes of various colors, some blended, some not. They are very bright and very intense, just full of pigment. The, uh, the colors here in the grasses and the flowers are brilliant reds and brilliant greens, but they all just go so well uh, so together. They just, just uh, tantalize your eye. In the uh, sky, as we go up, we'll find that she uses a, a broad brush, the only part of the painting where she uses a broad brush, and you'll see the, the lights and darks kind of blending together. Beautiful painting, that's number 1698. Uh, you'll get with that a resume of hers. She has exhibited paintings in New York City, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, or in Oregon, Boston, in Cleveland. She's participated in group shows at the Southwest General Hospital, 9th Street, Chelsea Gallery. She's had a solo show at the 9th Street Gallery. She's won Best of Show twice. Uh, she, her paintings are uh, at Sammy's on display in Chagrin Falls. She teaches a painting at the Cleveland Institute of Art and will teach a class this fall for Bay Crafter, Crafters. And she has a work in the permanent collections of Automated Packaging, Ernst & Young, Southwest General Hospital, and many others. You'll get all that information with it. The next piece, ah, the Velociraptor. I know somebody's been waiting for this one. $400, a reasonable price. This is number 10432, and it is a sculpture. It is just great. Now, with all of the Jurassic Park and the exhibit we had at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and all the excitement about dinosaurs, this is a really desirable piece. Monroe W. Copper IV is the artist. Now, we have on the board Copper Velociraptor. It doesn't mean that it's made of copper. That's the artist's name is Copper. Okay? So, uh, to tell you about that, it is a heat-treated solid welded steel uh, dinosaur, as you can see, 34 inches long, that's pretty big, and 18 inches high. He's located in the old firehouse on West 25th, north of Clark. He does metal and wood sculptures along with photography and interior design consulting. He's an active artist in the Cleveland area and has been for 15 years. His work is in many private and industrial collections throughout the country. Now this particular piece is a signed and numbered piece. So uh, Brad's going to turn this around so you can get some different angles of it. And then on the other side, and it's really pretty, it's sort of iridescent because of the treatment that it's had. And he's pointing to the name and the number. It, it's an addition of 100, and this is number 29. So you have a signed and numbered steel welded, cut and welded piece. Um, Bonfoy, he has worked at Bonfoy and Vixabaki as art. Uh, as an art restorationist, and he has restored antique textiles, oil paintings. He's a very versatile person, and this is just a charmer. This is going to be an overbid, I'm sure. The Velociraptor is number 10432, and the artist is M. W. Monroe W. Copper IV. And the last item is the Colbert sculpture. Uh, I have an article about 
Mr. Colbert, and you'll get that along with it, but let me tell you about this piece, which he, the artist, has donated. This is number 1095, valued $250. What a steal. Sandstone sculpture called Tribute to a Goat. This is donated by the artist. This is a wonderful sculpture. What he does, he lives in Oberlin, and he's donated for the past several years, and he always does these marvelous sculptures. They could be a garden sculpture. It could be inside, I suppose, but I think if it were mine, I'd have it outside. I know he has one that's outside, or maybe more than one, I don't know, that's, that's beginning to grow moss. And can you imagine how gorgeous that looks? Anyway, this piece is 11 inches high, 14 inches wide, uh, and 11 inches in the other direction. It's a piece of an old foundation stone. What he does is to get these old stand, sandstone pieces,